video covers Project 3 specific instructions. You'll start off with this video as well as your student learning objectives. There are several things you should read, including some IKEA instructions. Please note what makes IKEA instructions unique. They have no words in them. It's merely pictures directing you on what to do. Why do you think that might be? How many countries does IKEA operate in? How many different versions of instructions would they need based on languages? They don't include words because they have so many places they deliver and it would be a logistical nightmare to make sure that only instructions in certain languages ended up in certain places. There's also a very cute video about giving exact instructions. I recommend you watch this and be ready to laugh. There are some prior student work samples as well as some instructions that I have created in the past. Now for this assignment, you will need to review chapter 14 and look through all of the tips, tricks, and trainings videos because there are things there that will help you choose images, work with images, uh, format documents, and so forth. The goal here is to create detailed instructions on how to do something that you love to do. It should be simple enough that someone who's unfamiliar with it could do it. In other words, don't be telling someone how to break down an entire engine and rebuild a transmission. That's not something that someone new to this would try for a first time activity. Keep it to a small activity or a process. Anything super complicated is not going to work well because you want your person to feel accomplished when they've followed your instructions and achieved a goal. All the prior student work samples you see here will show how to send a text message on a certain kind of phone. Um, that used to be the way that I had this assignment set up, but I've changed it. If you don't have any idea what to do, then that might be a good starting point. Just whatever your specific model of phone is, make sure that you include that and how to send a message to someone you've never met before, to a number that's in your phone book, and replying to a message you've received. Whatever you decide to do, make sure that you give very specific instructions, including lots of images for your activity. Assume that your reader has a super basic familiarity with the topic, but they don't really know how to do the specific thing you're showing. These instructions should not be just a recipe listing the ingredients and how to put them together. I want you to be a little more creative than that. It should be how to text or how to put something together, or perhaps it is how to knit or how to cut out fabric for a pattern or something like that. It should be clear and concise with specific actions that the reader has to take, something concrete and something that they can do. Think about things like explain like I'm five. Explain it so that those who don't really know the topic well could easily follow your instructions. Make sure that all of your images are clear and consistent. That means that they need to have the same sort of formatting and background and um, keep your presentation neat and tidy. You must have a title for your instructions, information on what these instructions are going to lead the person to, subheaders and dividers if you have any sections in there. You'll need as many images as you need to clarify what you're doing, but you should have at least five. Most people will have many more than that. You should be consistent in your presentation, so all of them should have the same type of border or drop shadow or annotation. Make sure that you don't have any white images on a white page background, unless you have a border. I know when we were doing this with cell phones, often people would take a screenshot of their text message screen and the center of that screen is a white background. They would put it on the white page that they were working with in Word and then you would sort of lose the edges of the image. So make sure that your images have a very clear edge, even if you have to add your own border to it. Make sure you don't use more than three different fonts. Make sure it's visually appealing and interesting to look at. This is not an essay. Plain black text on a plain white background, double spaced, is not okay. This is, however, meant to be printed out, so include appropriate margins. And don't fall into the trap I've seen some folks do where they make their font huge because they feel like they have to fill up an entire page with just a very few short words. Make sure that it is consistent and neat and easy to read with big enough margins and a not too big font. I need to see clear evidence that you've taken some time to plan and put some effort into this. Correct spelling, punctuation, and grammar. Don't put your name on this. When's the last time you opened a product and the instruction manual had someone's name on it? 
don't include anything about this being for a class or being an assignment. Again, you're creating this as if you're about to include it with a product or with a process people are trying to do. Make sure that your pictures are not pixelated or for that matter that your proportions are constrained, you're not squished or stretched, and don't put citations on your images. Again, in an instruction manual, they just have the pictures. They don't say, I found this picture on Google. So make sure that you look for things that are under Creative Commons. And again, if you don't remember how to do that, those instructions are in the tips, tricks, and trainings area. As always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can.